Good afternoon, Yankee fans. This is, of course, the Simonetti source. Stop it. Want to take a second real quick to say thank you to all the heroes of the past and all the heroes of the present who fight for us to remain the greatest country in the world, which is the United States. States of America, thank you all. I know I sent out a tweet yesterday, but you can never say enough. Thank a vet when you see him. It is an honor and an honor and an honor and an honor to just say thank you. Speaking of this video and what it is about, it is about my tweet that I put out yesterday, and I'm going to read that for you. The Yankees are anticipating making strong pushes for Rays' Chris Archer and or Tigers' Michael Fulmer video coming tomorrow. <clears throat> now, I've read some of the comments, and I get it. I understand. A lot of people are saying, well, Simonetti, come on, man. That's not news. We know that's not news. We've known this. You have, we have, I have, everybody has known that the Yankees need starting pitching. We know that. We know that Fulmer's been an option. We know Archer's been rumored for quite some time. And, of course, we do know that others been rumored. Hamels, uh, Corbin, it, it, the list goes on and on and on and on of the guys the Yankees can acquire. But the reason why I want to make this video and I put that tweet out, here's how it works. Because a lot of people ask me, who are your sources? Or, you know, how are you getting this information? Well, put it this way. I've been able to grow up with certain people who know certain people in the Yankee organization that are in line with some sort of decision making or understanding that round table of what plan A's, B's, C's, D's are. And I do happen to have someone who relays some of that information to me now. There's times like this, for an example, where I sent out an email to this person about two weeks ago, never heard anything back, finally got an email back yesterday. That's when I reported on the news. So I want to break down a lot of what I found out, what I uncovered. Again, <clears throat> I've, been, I've been realistic to always say to you guys, you don't have to believe it. You don't have to take my word for it. But again, you would think at, to this point, you would somewhat believe it, considering everything's been just about 100% accurate. Now, of course, there's been times where it's been wrong or it's been off or it's been slightly altered or, or not exactly 100% correct. But again, name me a reporter, which I'm not, who has done that. I've blown him out the water. That's why they like to attack me. That's why they tell me, you need credentials. You need to go to Yankee Stadium every day and interview a player, then talk to us. That's what they say. But again, same guys that are doing that are retracting stories because they're wrong. Or are getting the wrong information and then fixing it when I put the info out. Anyway, no reason to, no reason to, to beat a dead horse there. Regarding Archer and uh, Michael Fulmer, I know a lot of you guys are against it. You're not huge fans of either one. Let me, let me just break down a couple of things. So Chris Archer, right? We know Chris Archer. We've seen him. We know what he has. Good stuff. Getting much better over his last multiple outings. Doesn't pitch well against the Red Sox. That is a negative. Is control for a couple of seasons. The ace of the Rays for years. He could be that guy that gets away from the A's, goes to a team like the Yankees, and really steps up. Or you may say... Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's just the same guy he's been all these years. Pitches to about a four ERA. Would you all really be that upset with that? I don't think I would. Because if consistency is what he brings, give me all of it. Am I wrong? Who besides Luis Severino in the Yankees rotation has at least given this team consistency. I will wait. Well, nobody else can answer, so I'm going to continue. But if I had to wait, I would wait. <laughs> Stop 
it. There's been no other ones. I get it. The y- Yankee fans, we are, we want the best. We want the, uh, the, 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 the best starters in the world. We want guys that come to this team that other teams don't want to get rid of, but we want them because we want them. And we just want to be the best. Yankee fans are the greatest, by the way. The greatest. No other team overreacts to every move. No other, whatever. whatever. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole there, and I don't want to go down because you guys know I like to talk. Anyway, Archer currently has a 4.29 ERA. Believe his fielding independent pitching says he's pitching to about mid three, high three. So performing better than what the stats may show. His last couple of outings, he's been much, much, much better. Six innings against Oakland just very recently. No runs given up. Before that, Boston, six innings, one run. Uh, pitch, probably one of his best games he's ever pitched against the Red Sox. Usually doesn't do that. And then the game before that, six and two-third innings, no runs. So if I'm just looking at his last three starts, he pitched 18 and two-third innings and gave a one earned run. Drop innings ERA to over five to about 4.29. So Archer looks like he's rounding into form to be the guy that we're used to him being. And I'm going to go over the two names that I wrote in that tweet before I say anything else, right? Michael Fulmer. Michael Fulmer is kind of trending in different directions. He's been more of the inconsistent guy. Again, he has room to continue to improve. He's done that throughout his career. Pitches in a pitcher's ballpark, which I would say is somewhat of the concern because going to Yankee Stadium, you better believe a lot of those fly balls towards the right field would actually be home runs. Now, I haven't really watched Fulmer enough to just say, yeah, that's the case. Anyway, Michael Fulmer is pitching right now to a 4.08 ERA. He's only pitched about 57 innings, almost a hidden inning, a little under that. Has allowed 29 runs so far. His last outing against Minnesota, five and two-third innings, one on run. The outing before that against Seattle, six and one-third innings, three on runs. The outing before that again versus Seattle, Four and one-third innings, six earned runs. So again, Yankee fans were also telling me no on Michael Fulmer because he got hit by a couple of Major League ball clubs. I'm going to repeat that. Yankee fans were saying no on Fulmer because he got hit by a Major League Ball club. Did that sink in for a second? Let it sink in and believe it. That was said. Anyway, let's not waste time on nonsense. <clears throat> so, you may ask me, all right, what are the news? What's the news? What's the news? What's the news? What do you got? You basically said that the Yankees are anticipating moves. Now, I did get more information than just, hey, they're interested in these guys. Put it this way, Brian Cashman knows the Yankees need to trade for a starter. He knows they may need to trade for two starters. And yes, you read that tweet right when it states, and or. Meaning, the Yankees could very well try and trade for both Archer and Fulmer. I don't think that would happen. I would be shocked. They certainly have the pieces to do it without giving up Torres or without giving up uh, Miguel Andujar, if that's what you really prefer. So I, I, I was able to dig a little deeper, and luckily I got more information back. So my response basically was, who's available? Who are the Yankees willing to deal? The response I got back was what I also expected. I was told what I think a lot of us have confirmed. Unless there's really a major injury, Clint Frazier is being targeted as a piece from the Yankees who is major league ready to step into a team's outfield. The Yankees have two players in AAA who are major league everyday ball players right now who are playing in Scranton. The Yankees are, in fact, marketing 
Clint Frazier, and to my surprise, Brandon Drury as available targets in trade deals that are major league ready ball players every day. Not platoon guys. These are guys that are ready to come in and play every single day for your ball club. So think about that for a second. And this is why I wanted to put that news out there, just because I didn't want to put all the information, because tweeting uh, uh, three paragraphs to me is always annoying. So I wanted to make a video. And I, I think we've kind of known this, but to know that this is what it is, to me, isn't surprising, no. But it lets you understand that Brian Cashman, I think, from what I'm hearing is really going to go for it. The last thing the Yankees want to do is win a wild card spot and get eliminated. Not after getting rid of Joe Girardi, getting Giancarlo Stanton, after a team just went to Game 7 in the ALCS. The Yankees are not stupid. They know their weakness is the rotation. I will also say something else I was told. If the Yankees were ever to miss out on a starter, they will look at the top relief guys in the game, and I hate that idea. Kelvin Herrera would be a possibility, which would be lovely, but I hate the idea of just saying, let's build our bullpen up and we'll run nothing out there on the mound. Hate it. Hate the idea of that. The Yankees need starters. So I also asked about Cole Hamels. And the response I got was, the positive of Hamels is the playoffs, is that he has the buyout option, they don't have to bring him back next year. Great experience, can no question about a handle New York. Would really be a fan favorite because of the workhorse mentality. He'll take the ball all the time and go at batters. Pitch well. The negative here is the luxury tax. The Yankees would have to surrender more to get the Rangers to eat most of that deal to allow Hamels to fit somewhat. And now luxury tax, you know, is a weird thing because a lot of it depends on the salaries had all year, not just what's remaining. A lot of it depends on that. So the Yankees would really have to, you know, finagle something and, and work something out, and they'll have to, it'll be a much larger trade than we expect. And what I mean by larger, just a lot more work would go in this type of deal. And if that is the case, I wouldn't doubt that work has started already to really get a plan in place on what the Rangers would want, how much the Rangers would have to eat to make the Yankees stay under the luxury tax. I'm telling you right now, they are not messing around with the luxury tax. They are not messing around with that luxury tax. Hal Steinbrenner wants to stay under. So the big news overall is that the Yankees are eyeing your controllable cost guys. Didn't find out much about Madison Bumgarner. I know you guys are waiting for me to say he is open for business. We don't know that yet. For the Giants to do that, they basically have to just admit to tearing the team apart if they trade Bumgarner right now. Should they? Maybe. You know, you just got Longoria and, and, and McCutcheon. You want to try to see if you could, you know, compete. But they could. You know, if they fall out even more, they could. Patrick Corbin, we've seen that, we, we know Arizona's injured. We know that Paul Goldschmidt has not been Paul Goldschmidt. He's gotten better here recently, and he's getting hot. He'll carry that team in that division. A.J. Pollock has been injured. So you will know much more about what the Diamondbacks' plans are Come closer to the deadline, but they are going to want quite a bit for Patrick Corbin, and I think the Yankees can definitely get him. And if the Yankees get him, 
I try to work a deal out with him for an extension immediately. Wouldn't wait to the wouldn't wait to the off season. Try to lock him in when you can. Speaking of another name that could be a trade piece of the Yankees, that is Chance Adams. I had a very very interesting email regarding Adams. I flat out asked, "Hey, regarding Adams, have the Yankees ever decided just to move him to the pen?" Here's the response I got. They will not consider that unless he is deemed untradeable and teams will not trade for him, which is unlikely. The comp that they gave for Adams out of the pen is similar to David Robertson because of the good breaking ball. Most scouts believe he is a relief pitcher because he cannot find regular rhythm and regular command of all of his pitches. Most scouts believe he would be a very solid relief pitching option for the Yankees come the end of the year. So what you might see is if teams do not see Adams as a legit prospect and more of a throw-in, you may see the Yankees hold on to Adams, switch him to the pen, and call him up in August and start pitching out of the Major League bullpen. That's interesting. The other question I had regarding the Yankees' bullpen and if they fell out of the option of trading for starters, they have really good relief pitching in AAA. Adams and Cody Carroll alone are enough. You could also see Justice Sheffield possibly do the things that Johan Santana did and that uh, Francisco Liriano did. These great, young, talented left-handed pitchers towards the end of the year with innings limits come up and dominate out of the pen. That's also a possibility. Now, I do believe if Justice Sheffield stays healthy, he will make a start likely in the next month or so. I do believe that. I think within... A little before the All-Star break, you may see Sheffield pitching in the game for the Yankees. I think the only way a guy like Sheffield is dealt is if one of those names pop up near the deadline that you never thought or never expected, like a Madison Bumgarner. But again, guys, I'm about to cut this one short here. The whole idea of my tweet was based off of emails that I receive that have been very spot on. The Yankees are willing to deal their youth to get starting pitchers they need. They don't want to overpay. But how many teams and the ones that are concerning that would concern the Yankees and get into a battle over starting pitchers are the Atlanta Braves. And the Milwaukee Brewers, those are just two big names off the top of my head that are trying to win, trying to win now, and they got deep farm systems. But how many teams have major league assets at AAA? And when I say major league assets at AAA, I don't just mean guys that are close to being major league ready. That might be Major League ready. The Yankees got two guys guaranteed that are Major League ready. Clint Frazier and Brandon Drury. I would be very surprised unless Gardner or Hicks go down with an injury that Clint Frazier is not traded come July 31st. Wouldn't be surprised if Brandon Drury is also traded. I would be shocked because I reported in the offseason that the Yankees were always interested in Drury. They like him. Their advanced scouting loves him. He's young. He can still find a spot on this ball club somewhere, somehow. So we will see, but that is the news I'm bringing to you today. As you guys know, 
The Simonetti source has been your leader in Yankee news. I will continue to be that. Updates as I do with most of my videos. There's so much coming your guys' way. I am pumped up about what I will soon be delivering to you all. Think about this. A cartoon version of Simonetti saying stop it on a t-shirt. Come on, man. Come on. I should put a button on it, too. That when you press the button on the shirt, it just comes out. Stop it. <laughs> but, guys, so much. Uh, the merchandise is coming. The merchandise is coming. End of June, early July, you will be seeing the Simonetti Source merchandise. You will be seeing merchandise for the music. You will be seeing music in general. Uh, working so hard on my album, Sunday Dinner, that I released the album cover. Amazing artwork done. There's going to be more of that coming your guys' way. Music videos set up all of July. Good locations. Um, good features on this album. Really exciting stuff. Um, other than that, guys, you will be seeing, of course, the Fortnite videos and video game videos and all the crazy stuff. The channel is pushing towards 800 subscribers. Need to get to that 1,000. Any way you guys can help will be amazing. Again, this is, of course, the Simonetti Source. I am out.